iPhone 5S. Apple's flagship device is here, the new iPhone 5S, and I felt like they were, you know, really solid features. The rumor mill was pretty accurate yeah. this time. A lot of new updates to the camera, which were interesting, burst mode. If you hold down on the shutter button, it'll burst a bunch of photos. It can actually take 10 frames a second. I don't think it was anything that people were super shocked about. Uh, but I thought there was, you know, definitely a solid new offering from Apple. Yeah, I think the fingerprint sensor is one of the more significant new offerings from Apple. It's definitely a new and exciting hardware feature, which are few and far between in smartphones these days. But I think there's a lot of potential to make people's lives more convenient with that. Not having to, you know, type in passwords on a touch screen every single time you want to buy something in the App Store or log into your email. Like, there's a lot of convenience in that, and so if Apple fully flushes that out, I think that could be a game changer for them and something that a lot of companies might look to copy. Biometrics have not, are not necessarily a new thing, but mm -hmm. we haven't really seen it at this kind of scale. Right. So I'm just hoping that it works you know, kind of as quickly and as well to, like you said, make things easier for people. Another thing that Apple's working on that I find really interesting is that instead of going you know, with a quad-core processor to match what every other Android phone is doing, they're sort of building these specialty processors for specialty tasks, a lot like Motorola did with the Moto X. In this case, they have a single processor dedicated to tracking all the motion sensors on the phone. Their immediate application for that is tracking your steps in a day and attaching that to a Nike app, which is something that's really interesting. So, you know, it's fitness and health right now, but I think there's a lot more they can do with that going forward. iPhone. 5C. So people joke that the 5C stood for China or cheap. Uh, the international market is obviously huge. And here in the U.S. and a lot of the Western world, a lot of people who have smartphones, who want smartphones, you know, already have one. But one third of all smartphones are now sold in China and all these emerging markets, some people are getting these phones for the first time. There's obviously a much bigger potential to sell to new people overseas. But at 549 off contract, I was really surprised at that price for the 5C. You cannot call that a cheap device. That is solidly mid-range, maybe even upper range to some of these potential international customers. But you definitely can't call this like a low rent, low end iPhone. No, definitely. I think this was done in Apple's interest more than anyone. The plastic back is going to be a lot cheaper to make for Apple. And they sell a lot of these mid-range phones. So if they drive up their profit margins on these mid-range phones, they can stand to make a lot of money from this. I think this was a solid product announcement for Apple. So even though maybe there was no huge surprise in this, I think Apple did do you know what it needed to do today. Yeah, I mean, it was far from boring. It was definitely an incremental upgrade, but that's what they do every year now. So I don't think there's any issue with that. I would have liked to have seen that maybe improve battery life a little bit more than they did with the iPhone 5S, but if that's the worst thing about the new announcement, then they have bigger problems.